So I'm regularly asked, what is the key characteristic that I wanna look for in a stock that is going to move it higher, that's gonna give me the best potential for upside out, out there in the market? And this is actually a pretty easy question to answer. And fortunately, there are tools available to make the searching process uh, pretty simple. But there are a few things that we have to define first, just to understand why this works the way that it does, uh, why it works so well historically, and why we expect it to continue doing that in the future. So as we get started here, if you subscribe and like the video, please let us know, give us a comment. It helps the channel out a lot. And keep in mind that we also do live streams every week where we look at the market as it is at the time, uh, take questions, look at individual stocks and trading strategies as well. So the issue that I find that a lot of investors deal with when they are evaluating indicators or they're searching for a stock or stock screeners in general, which can sometimes have a bit of a bad reputation, and there's a reason for this, is that the, the real issue here is that usually you're looking at fundamental characteristics that are a snapshot in time, meaning what is that particular characteristic right now? And this avoids some of the most valuable parts of fundamental analysis. So uh, it, we could kind of summarize this as to uh, take the P-E ratio. The P-E ratio does not matter. In fact, it actually kind of works the opposite way that you would think that it does. We've recorded a video that you can check out on that as well that you might get a kick out of. Uh, but it, here's the problems with fundamental analysis when you're using a stock screener. Uh, number one is that any fundamental characteristic that you're looking at is it properly accounting for the fact that you may be looking for stocks in one sector versus another? So another way to think about this would be that growth in the utility sector is going to be just inherently much lower than it is in, let's say, retail or technology. Now, that does not necessarily mean the stocks in the retail sector are bad or technology are bad or that stocks in the utility sector are bad. They're just different. So what we're usually looking for are the best stocks in those sectors so we can really optimize a portfolio. Uh, the second thing is it ignores historical context. So a classic example would be valuation ratios, whether it's PE ratio is a good one or, or return on equity is another one. Return on equity can be quite deceptive. It may be really high and that could actually be a really bad thing. It just depends on, well, what did those numbers look like historically? Where have they been coming from? Are, are they on their way down or are they on their way up? Obviously, the latter is going to be a lot more uh, important. Relative performance is another one. How do they compare against their peers? And lastly, this is an issue that investors deal with a lot that is problematic. As we get towards the end of the year, of the calendar year, most companies have a fiscal year that corresponds to the calendar year. So it has been almost a year, 10 months, nine months, uh, et cetera, since the last time they issued an annual report. Well, most screening tools, so if you're using a screening tool from your broker, most screening tools, they rely on the annual reports. So you may be doing a search where the data is really old. This is a problem that can be solved by looking at trailing 12 months uh, information. Now, I just laid out the problems with most screening tools and why it is, but I haven't yet told you well, what is the, the indicator that we would say is number one. And that there are actually several indicators that are very, very good, and which one is best kind of varies from time to time. They're usually all trading places in the top three or four. Uh, these are things like uh, free cash flow growth rates, earnings growth rates, uh, margin growth rates. And, and these days, actually, in fact, over the last couple of years, Operating margin growth rates have been the most predictive for stocks that are likely to outperform the S&P 500. In fact, looking for uh, stocks that have the operating margin characteristics I'm going to talk to you about, over the last year, it outperformed the S&P 500 by 88% versus the S&P 500 at 39%. Now, over the longer run, uh, stocks that have this characteristic, I'm going to look at operating margins specifically. We're going to be very narrow in our focus right now. Uh, they, over the long run, they outperform the S&P 500 by about 30%, which is still, that's fantastic. So what is it exactly that we're looking at for operating margin? What we want is we want operating margin to have been going up for the last three years, including on a trailing 12 month basis. So if you were doing this search in November, you know that you're gonna get the most uh, current information. So it, it will be extrapolated a little bit, but it'll still give you an idea as to how they're trending right now. That is the, the 
historical methodology that we applied to find those numbers is to, is this the best indicator right now? And, and as I said, it's consistently right up there with the top three, with the free cash flow growth, earnings growth, and things like this. Well, let's define what operating margin actually is. Not everybody understands what this is and why it matters so much. And then we'll talk about, well, how do we find this? How do we streamline this process so we can make it really, really easy? So operating margin uh, can be calculated if you want to do it by hand. I'm going to explain it to you really quick, but it can be calculated really, hand, re really easy off the income statement. So we're going to look at the income statement. And the income statement, uh, as you might imagine, it starts with revenue and it ends with income. So we'll start with revenue, whatever that uh, happens to be. Or uh, another way that uh, analysts will sometimes talk about this is they'll call revenue, they'll call it sales. So subtracted from revenue and sales are costs of goods sold or services provided, whatever it is. And if you subtract those, you get gross income. So gross uh, income. And if we, from here, if we do a little side problem here, so, so, so let's take, a, uh, we'll say that we take revenue, uh, well, gross income first. I'm just gonna abbreviate this. So gross income uh, divided by revenue, that will give us our gross margin. So if you ever hear analysts talking about that, especially after earnings reports and so forth, now you know what that is. Basically, it tells you uh, how well is the company doing operationally uh, it, or from a managerial perspective if you only account for the costs directly associated with providing the, the goods or the services that they, they actually do. And, and this is a, a, a good measure. It's not the best measure, but, but it is a good one. All right, if we go one more layer here, we get operating expenses. So we've already accounted for revenue. So we, we get, uh, after this, we get operating expenses, and that's a, obviously a subtraction, uh, subtraction. So expenses that are operating. Now this is things like uh, managerial expenses, anything that's not directly associated with putting uh, wheels on the widgets and sending them out, uh, out out there into marketing would be a classic example. So sales expenses, things like this, they would be in operating expenses. Now, why do we care about this? Well, the, the way that a company is managed, it tells us a lot about management skill level, how likely they are to continue performing well, if, assuming that they have been recently, if, if they're able to really focus on the entire enterprise. And the way, one of the most convenient ways for us to be able to evaluate the management's efficiency is by looking at operating expenses. Is it growing or shrinking relative to their uh, revenue? Uh, if it's growing at the same rate or shrinking at the same rate, that's usually okay. But what we would really like to see is for revenue to be growing faster than op or operating expenses are. So there, there's usually not a lot they can do about cost of goods sold besides keeping it stable. But if they can drive expenses, operating expenses at a slower rate than they're driving revenue, that tells you something about uh, management's effectiveness. And in fact, if we subtract that, so we get uh, operating income. Now, operating uh, income is also very similar to uh, EBIT. So if you've ever heard uh, investors talk about um, uh, EBIT, which is uh, earnings before uh, interest and taxes. Now, EBIT, the difference between EBIT and operating income is that it, uh, it accounts for non-operating income and we're not actually interested in that. So it would be things like, uh, like interest payments or interest income that they've, that, they've, uh, that they've collected. We want operating income. So the, the percentage of operating income to be growing on a year over year basis. And what we're looking for is, has it been growing for the last three years, including a trailing 12 month measure? That's actually not all that strict. And uh, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of companies that do qualify. There are a few other filters we might want to pile on top of that uh, to avoid penny stocks or, or some of those things potentially, or to look for stocks that have other characteristics you might be interested in like uh, dividend income and so forth. The trick at this point is how do we find companies that look like this? How do, how do we evaluate a company's trending operating income? Now, if you have the money to be able to invest in a Bloomberg terminal or a Reuters terminal, which is what professionals use, great. Uh, you can do this really, really easy. If you look at their screening tools with your broker, they probably do not have anything like this, but there are some things that you can do. And there's one really, really quick thing that you can do that will not cost you anything. Uh, so one of the things you could do, of course, is you could, uh, you could use a financial statement. So you can look at the filings. And I have an example here that I pulled from Otter Tail. It's a utility uh, 
operationally, they've been doing very, very well. And of course, they've been re rewarded in their share price. I just zoomed right in on their income statement here. And I'm not asking you to, to look at anything here specifically other than just to evaluate the complexity. Additionally, most of the time when a company reports their end of year statement, because then you'd have to pull their quarterly reports to get a trailing 12 months number. And most of the time when they do this, they're only gonna tell you the last three years anyway. So you might have a little bit of overlap there that's hard to uh, uh, be able to gather that data. So you'd have to go get last year's uh, income statement as well. And then of course add the quarterlies. As you can tell, that what I'm trying to emphasize here is that it can be very challenging. Uh, there are some uh, finance portals out there that are actually not too bad. So here I've gone to Market Watch and I've pulled up Otter Tail again. Uh, if you pull a quote page on, on Market Watch, which is one I've recommended for a long time, I'm not uh, pitching them, they're not paying us for this. But uh, if you go to the Financials tab on the Corporate Snapshot page, they have some pretty good trailing information. You can see it here. Uh, sometimes you got to do a little bit of the calculations yourself. It's not perfect, but it, it helps a little bit. And ironically, it's one of the, the best ones out there compared to uh, some of those that your broker would provide, which you would think would be better, but it tends not to be. Now, uh, finally, there's another place that you can do this with, and that's at learningmarkets.com. We don't charge you anything for it. You can just go there and run a search. And in fact, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I am on learningmarkets.com and you can explore a lot of trending fundamental data like this, which you can't get anywhere else without a major investment. So over on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click on the, the menu here, screener. And I'm gonna create a screen, but I'll show you how you can use the one that I'm doing in the video. You can just run it automatically. So I'm gonna create a screen and we have a lot of advanced uh, criteria. So I, I'm gonna walk through this. I'm not gonna take very long. This is not a complicated thing to do. But the reason why I wanna do this is to give you an idea as to, well, golly, I, I could probably modify a search like this a little bit to look for the things that I'm really interested in. So let's say, for example, you want only stocks that are under a certain share price or uh, you want stocks that have a dividend yield over a certain amount or something like that, that you could modify this. So I'm gonna select the income statement and I'm looking for operating margin and specifically I'm looking for operating margin trend. So I'm gonna put a little check mark there. I'm gonna say, well, okay, I want something that's got operating margin that has been growing over the last three years, including the trailing 12 months. If you wanted to be really picky, you could even extend it over a, a four year period. And if I were running a search like this at the beginning of the year, I might consider that because most of the companies, that there's not enough trailing 12 month data to be relevant. So if I were running a search like this in January, February, it's not as a big of a deal. All right, so I, I'm for now, I'm gonna unselect that because I'm recording this in uh, November. So, uh, well, actually the very end of October. So it, it is important to me to be able to grab that uh, trailing 12 months. All right, now from here, I could add other fundamental criteria. As I said, there are a few of these that kind of bubble up to the top that are always really good. Uh, operating margin is always very good. Earnings growth is always very good. Free cash flow growth is always very good. Uh, I, I'm going to keep it simpler. And I'm going to look for companies that are, I'm going to put a few things in here just to look for the kinds of companies I'm interested in. So market capitalization, I'm going to say a low of $2 billion and a high, we'll say, Oh, I'll leave it open-ended on my large cap. Uh, we'll say a, a, a trillion dollars on the market cap. So that should that should grab anything that's possible out there. And just, since I use this as an example, I'm going to also select for the current stock price. I don't want anything that's you know maybe less than a dollar. So I'll put a minimum here of a dollar and a maximum, which could be, again, this is very helpful for a lot of investors with smaller accounts if they want to be able to limit it. So I'm going to, but I'm going to say hundred dollars on the, on the top side. Uh, and then maybe we'll do, I would say uh, a technical trend indicator just to make sure I'm getting things that are generally trending positively. It's a bull market right now. So uh, if they're not trending positively, that's usually a warning sign. There's something else going on that I don't want to evaluate that company. And you can see here, I've got a running total. I've got 85 results that I could weed through. So I am going to apply this and then just look at the results that I get. This is, by the way, where I found Otter Tail. There's a lot of interesting ones on here. Uh, some companies have been languishing over as I record this video. So there's some that have been trending kind of sideways as the market's been a bit choppy. Uh, Ball Corporation is kind of a favorite of mine. Box, a very interesting REIT. Uh, as I'm just scanning through her, DR Horton, very interesting. Uh, Delic Logistics, that very interesting right now in the energy sector. So you can kind of see evaluating this. You might notice that there's some grades. We do grade stocks uh, automatically. 
we have very uh, rigid scale, so you gotta be performing really, really well to get an A. So anything that's a B or better is usually pretty good on those other characteristics that we talked about. Now, what if you don't wanna do any of this? You just wanna push a button and see what, what are the current stocks that are available. Just go to Learning Markets, and I'm going to go to Pre-Built Screens over here on the left-hand menu again. And Operating Margin Screen, I just loaded this up uh, as I've recorded this video. And you can just run this screen and it will give you those same stocks. Then from there, if you want to modify it, you can modify it to look for the kinds of companies that you're particularly interested in. So what is our ultimate objective? The, I want to be clear that most of the time when investors are asking to be able to find the best stocks, they phrase it as the best stock, which if you don't have a crystal ball, it, it's, that's not really possible. But what you, can, what you can do is look for the best stocks where we take advantage of diversification. Well, historically speaking, over, lo the, over the long run, there are very few indicators, measures, fundamental criteria that perform consistently year after year after year that stocks with those characteristics do better than the average, which is hard to do. A lot of professionals wish they could, not very many can. Uh, and so what we're relying on is the work that is being done by professionals who do outperform. Well, this is one of those characteristics that we look for is growth and operating margin basis. Uh, including other characteristics could even improve it a little bit more or at least give us a uh, smoother uh, portfolio in different market conditions. But over the last couple of years, this is the one that's been performing the best. Our objective here is to increase the odds that we have a portfolio that is compensating us for the risk that we are taking by providing capital to the markets. That is the business that we are in, so we want to put those odds in our favor. Come check us out on our channel for more educational videos like this. If you like our no-nonsense approach, our realistic approach to investing, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And one more time, I wanna remind you that we do live streams here on YouTube as well, where you can come ask questions. We look at the live market, evaluate individual stocks, and look at trading strategies.